Chainlink, connecting blockchain to real world industries. If you're here today watching my video, you're probably quite into crypto, or maybe you're new to crypto, or maybe you're just interested in Chainlink. Now, as we all know, the large majority of people have absolutely no idea of what blockchain is, or of course, how blockchain works. Now, Chainlink really excites me because Chainlink is going to allow the large majority of consumers to be able to use blockchain products without even knowing. Chainlink is going to be integral to connect real world industries with blockchain technology. In this very brief review, I'm gonna bring you the problems, the solutions, and some real world use cases that Chainlink is planning to implement. I'm Maximilian, welcome to BitAssist. If this is your first time here and you're looking for cryptocurrency reviews, or cryptocurrency news, then make sure to subscribe to our channel right now. Fantastic, without the way, I'm gonna bring you a brief review and presentation I put together on Chainlink. Let's get started with a quick overview and a few words of what Chainlink is looking to do. As I have said already, Chainlink is looking to connect blockchain to real world industries. Chainlink takes information from external from blockchains and puts it on chain. How does it do that? Well, with Chainlink, smart contracts can use decentralized oracles to retrieve data from off-chain APIs, data pools, and other resources, and integrate that highly valuable information onto a blockchain. You may ask yourself, what is a decentralized oracle? Don't worry, we'll jump into that just shortly. Let's go on to what potentially are the problems that Chainlink is looking to solve. The problem. The problem is known as the smart contract connectivity problem. There's a lack of connectivity with external resources, which is creating a large limitation for developers to build real world applications. So let's use a quick example. Now let's say you're uh, building a DAP that's like a sports book or a bookie and you're helping or punters to bet on, let's say horse racing. You need external data feeds to give you the results for these races. Now, can you trust these external data feeds? Now, that is when we look at oracles. Now, oracles are there to bring in information and data feeds and to give that information out to applications to give maybe a payout for a horse race. Now, can we trust centralized oracles? Well, majority of businesses that use oracles today are using centralized oracles, and yes, they can. But what Chainlink is doing now is building a decentralized oracle and allowing for absolutely no trust to be had to get this data and to allow to do, let's say, a payout or a horse race. So this is known as the smart contract connectivity problem, is that right now there's not any way of a blockchain to be able to integrate with an external data feed. Chainlink now is looking to solve that problem. So if we look at this diagram, it gives you a very good understanding or idea of how really right now blockchains are so siloed from external data feeds or external real world businesses. In the middle there, of course, we'll see Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hyperledger, and we'll see these exterior data feeds and real world businesses that are unable to speak to a blockchain protocol. So as some of you might know that um, Chainlink have partnered or are working with Swift, which is a massive banking network, the biggest in the world and does trillions and trillions of dollars. Now, what this will allow for Swift and a blockchain, let's say like Ethereum to do is to be able to pay out, let's say, a bank transfer via a smart contract. The same would apply to, let's say, if you look in the top left hand corner, Bloomberg terminals for market prices. Let's say you've got a smart contract that needs a data feed for um, the price of oil. What Chainlink will allow for you to do will be able to call on an outside data feed, let's say from Bloomberg terminal, and to pull that data into your, into your smart contract and let's say it hits a certain point, it allows for your smart contract to activate or to sell or to buy. So very, very cool. Um, and that's the way that things have typically been that smart contracts and outside data feeds have not been able to speak. 
that's how it looks today. So the solution. The solution is a highly reliable decentralized oracle. The Chainlink solution works as a secure blockchain middleware between non-tamper-proof smart contracts and external data sources such as APIs. As we've shown in the, in, in the previous image is that smart contracts are tamper-proof. Um, of course, they are immutable, but these external data feeds um, don't really speak to immutable smart contracts. Um, so they've needed a middleman or a middleware, as said here, to help that um, two parties to come together to allow for a simple, seamless operation starting from outside data feed to someone getting, let's say, paid or a smart contract getting triggered or, you know, something along those lines. So some of you might be thinking like, what's an Oracle? What's a decentralized Oracle? Um, so quickly I'm gonna take you through how the Chainlink decentralized Oracle works. So it's got an inbuilt reputation system, bidding system, and a decentralized network that relies on independent Oracle service providers. Let's say that's like um, data feed providers. Users can ensure their data is trustworthy as it's verified by multiple independent sources. So basically how we can assume that this decentralized Oracle and the data that's been fed through it is real is that there's a reputation system between all the different Oracles and data providers. And if you're not giving correct data, you kind of just get spat out. You know, you get a bad reputation and you lose out. Therefore, you're not able to give your information anymore. Now, how would that work? There needs to be some incentive, right? So that's where the Chainlink token comes in. The token exists to create a financial incentive for Chainlink network to play nice. Um, now, as I've just said, um, if you're a data provider, let's say for horse racing, and uh, you provide great clean data that is always correct, you're going to get incentivized and you're going to earn link tokens. Now, link tokens, of course, can be sold in the open market, or they can uh, be traded within a network, but really earning that is a massive incentive to make sure that your data is correct. On the other hand, if your data is incorrect, you're not gonna earn the chain link token, otherwise known as link, and of course, your reputation will be very low, therefore being kicked out. So this is how the chain link Oracle is kind of making sure that all the information is above board. So the bad actors are removed, as I've said, uh, disincentivized from the system and the most trustworthy nodes are the most profitable. This gives a free market economic benefit for Oracle services to be consistently trustworthy and providing great data or their own data. So I think that's an amazing system and um, I like the way that sounds. It's completely decentralized. It's along the same lines of uh, blockchain technology. And of course, I think a reputation system across a large uh, network of service providers is great because, you know, if you even go on like, let's say Trustpilot um, or a review website right now, or you're on Netflix, you look at reviews, right? We, as, as humans, we take reviews very seriously. The reputation scoring and bidding is, is a great way to have a decentralized Oracle system. In this next image, it's going to kind of just show you how um, the Chainlink um, Oracle would work. So let's take from um, the top. Um, it's got Swift, Banks, um, uh, Citigroup, Chase, HSBC. Then coming through to the Chainlink Oracle and then through to a smart contract platform or let's say Bitcoin. Now, if we take it from um, take it from here. They pull um, um, a bank transfer information from the SWIFT network or from Chase Bank. It goes to the Chainlink Oracle, which um, can pull in the data, make sense of all the data, put it into the right format, which will spit that out into a smart contract or use that Oracle to input that data into a smart contract, which then can be settled on the blockchain. Again, taking external data, putting it into a smart contract and settling it on the blockchain.
There are many different use cases and we're going to jump into those right now. So um, use cases of a Chainlink decentralized Oracle nodes. Now, um, exchange rate data. I've already mentioned that um, on, let's say, Bloomberg terminals for oil prices. So for accurate pegging of stable coins to a fiat currency. It's a good example. Uh, capital markets data, pricing baskets of tokenized assets and securities, uh, benchmark reference data. So that's incorporating like interest rates into smart financial derivatives. Um, the one that I really like is time and interval data uh, for event triggers grounded in precise SI time measurement. Um, another one that I also really like is sporting events, as I've already mentioned, for prediction market resolution and fantasy sports contracts. Um, a great example is flight statistics. Um, so as used by passengers that may have uh, missed flights for compensation. So I'm going to move on to another example I've got here um, on that exact topic. So let's say, for example, um, I go and I maybe it doesn't happen right now, but it will surely happen in the future. I buy a ticket off an app. Um, let's say EasyJet. Okay, I buy my ticket. I have no idea that it's on the blockchain and it's using a smart contract, but I just go along and buy my ticket. I've been told um, uh, a few days later there's some severe weather delays, um, and my unfortunately the airport gets in touch with me and says that my flight has been cancelled. Now this information is going to get fed immediately from this um, oracle or from this data feed at the airport via the Chainlink Oracle, which will then be pushed through to the smart contract I originally bought my plane ticket through, and I would be paid out automatically my compensation. At the same time, what we can integrate into this as well is, let's say, an insurance provider. Um, and um, let's say the, the insurance provider was happy to pay X amount for three hour delay or X amount for the whole day delay that that Oracle data as well can get bundled in with the airport's data um, into your smart contract and you could get paid out for not being able to get your flight. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I didn't want to keep this too long. Uh, it's quite a, a, um, a confusing and in-depth operation. Is a hell of a lot more technical than I've done. I just wanted to give whoever was looking to watch an overview uh, an idea of what Chainlink is. I do think Chainlink is incredibly important for adoption of businesses to use blockchain technology for applications to actually have real world use cases. So if you have enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we do try to bring you a video once a week. Sometimes we cannot for other things that get in the way, but we do enjoy hearing your feedback. So do make sure to give us a like if you've enjoyed this. If you've got questions about, let's say, ways that Chainlink can be implemented, you'd like to explore further, or you'd like us to look into with some more detail, then make sure to get in touch uh, in the comments below. That's it. I'm Maximilian. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.